27th physics lesson, we're going to look at the conservation of momentum. Uh, we're going to look at what it means to have momentum conserved. We're going to look at the equations and uh, the, the conservation of momentum equation in various situations. You'll know the difference between the inelastic and elastic collision, and we're going to be able to solve for different variables and, and what will look like the conservation of momentum equation. We'll break it out under certain situations. Okay, so the variables we're going to have in this unit, we're going to still have momentum like last unit, P. We're going to have the unit kilograms times meters per second. We're going to mass M. That's the variable in the equation. And we're going to have the unit kilograms. We're going to have velocity V, and the unit's going to be meters per second. And so the conservation of moment, momentum says that all the momentum, which is mass times the velocity before, so this first object coming over here, and this second object that started over here, their initial momentum, see those eyes, those stands for initial, their, their momentum before, the, the mass times velocity before, equals their mass times velocities afterwards. Um, but what you would do, and you're going to see this in the equation, you'd add, let me just get to the equation, um, all the mass times velocity initially of the first object plus all the mass times velocity initially of the second object equals the mass times velocity of the first object afterwards, F standing for final, plus the mass times the velocity of the second object final. So what you'll see here is you have two, ob two objects. They're both traveling with their own momentum. They're still separate afterwards, traveling with their own momentum afterwards. And all this is is a breakdown of this equation above. All the momentum before equals all the momentum after and that is what the conservation of momentum means so we have interactions that we're going to look at in this in this section and we're going to kind of break out an equation from that conservation momentum equation we can have objects that stay as one piece at the beginning and then they separate like uh, exploding as you see there um, uh, throwing if you have a pitcher the ball and the pitcher is one at the beginning and then the uh, you know, pit, they're not traveling they're, they're standing there they're about to, to wind up they pitch at that point in time the ball starts moving and the pitcher starts moving and we're going to pretend like we're on a frictional surface in this section. So if he was on some super ice, he would go backwards as he pitched the, pitched the ball. Then we're going to look at other scenarios where objects are joining. If you catch a football and you're successful at it, you're going to catch that football and you will both um, travel with a new velocity. You're initially traveling with a separate velocity and that afterwards you're traveling together in one velocity. Or um, this picture right here, I have a dart, dart hitting a dartboard, each separate, each having their own velocity. The dart, dartboard wasn't moving, the dart was. They hit and after they hit, then you have a combined object moving with a single velocity. We're going to look at that scenario too. So first of all, we're going to take a look and we're going to break down this equation into where objects were one and then they separated. And if objects were one, we can say the initial velocity for both of these were the same. And what we can do mathematically is we can take that vi out and put it in the front and it ends up being vi equals the objects combined added together with one velocity equals the objects afterwards, each with their own momentums, each with their own mass and velocities, mass and velocities afterwards of these two separate objects. You add those together, it's gonna equal the entire momentum before. Once again, this is really just the conservation of momentum equation, but under the scenario that you see in this picture. Uh, objects joining. So we'll take that equation and we'll say, okay, well, you have two masses and they both are traveling together afterwards. They both have the same final velocity and we can do the same thing here. We can go ahead and take that and we can throw the VF in front and it just, just becomes VF equals mass one plus mass two. The reason why this equation would be important because a lot of times you can just go straight to the um, to this initial equation for any sort of scenario. But if they said, what was the combined velocity of the two objects after the scenario happened, you would have to use a specialized form like this to solve for something, like solve for that question. So the types of collisions we're going to look at, elastic collision. Um, the deal with the elastic collisions, the momentum and kinetic energy are conserved. So this is key here. Kinetic energy is conserved as well. Where um, an example of that is going to be when you have objects that don't change, they bounce in off of each other, uh, they maintain their shape completely. A perfect e elastic collision would not release heat. Nothing would be everything like two pool balls hitting each other. Two pool balls would maintain their shape as one ball hits the other ball. They're going to both just bounce off of each other, going to maintain their shape. If it was perfect, no heat would be lost as well. In both kinetic energy and momentum are conserved, whereas an elast inelastic, inelastic with the IN elastic collision, 
momentum is conserved but not kinetic energy. So just remember, momentum is always conserved in collisions, but kinetic energy is lost to the surrounding. Not remember, it was lost to the surrounding. Um, it's one of the types of mechanical energy. So it would be lost outside the system. It wouldn't be in the objects moving. And the kinetic energy, the KE equation, you could solve for this by doing one half mv squared for all the different parts. And you can add them again. You'll find out that the before and after would not be equal to it. And then that, that anything missing would have been lost from the system. Collision equation. So we have elastic collision equation. The main elastic collision equation has two objects, both separate. Their momentum's added equals both objects still separate. Their momentum's added afterwards. This is the conservation of momentum equation, but we can also consider it the elastic collision equation when we have two objects. If we had three or four objects, we could just keep on adding momentums to each side depending on what's going on. Well, for elastic collisions, you'd have to have three objects on the left. If there were three objects on the right, they'd have to be equal. Inelastic collisions for that equation, um, the main one that we're going to use is, is two objects sticking together and therefore they have a single final velocity. So this is the one, once again, it doesn't have to be a collision to use this equation. We saw the scenarios before, but two mass masses, two velocities, so two momentums separate before, hitting each other, sticking to each other, having a single velocity and a single mass, which was the, just the combination of these two masses in the first place. So let's look at some of these problems Well, after this question. In which of these collisions is kinetic energy conserved? Inelastic, elastic, or both, and that is going to be elastic collisions. In which of these collisions is momentum conserved? Inelastic, elastic, or both, and the answer is going to be both. Okay, so let's try some problems. So uh, I went ahead and made it a little easier on you by just throwing these things together, and I, I, I combined them even differently here. Um, you just make up a scenario as you see it. You have a firecracker which has a mass of 0.8 kilograms. It's going to explode. So it has a single velocity, a single mass, but it's going to explode into two pieces. So I just go ahead and I start calling those two pieces part one and part two. Whereas initially I just said, you know, I did, I just called it one thing. I didn't say one or two, but I could have said one plus two if I wanted to. You know, subscripts are just for your own kind of following through the problem. So you have a 0.8 kilogram firecracker and it's going to travel through the air at 12 meters per second to the right so this is a positive value it explodes after the explosion a uh, 0.3 kilogram piece right here flies to the left so i get to give that a negative value at 6.0 meters per second what's the mass of the other piece and so it doesn't tell me if you look at this picture you can tell but all you could do is all you have to do is uh, take this 3, subtract it by the 0.8, and you get the size of the other piece, and that's going to be this, this right here. The other piece is going to have a velocity, and we have to figure out what it is. So when we do the math, we go ahead and multiply the first two numbers together, and we get to this. Um, at this point in time, we cannot subtract this 1.8 from the 0.5. This is 0.5 V, the second piece Fs, whatever, final. Um, we need to add that to the other side and we add it to both sides so we get rid of that and we add to this side we get 11.4 equals 0.5 the final velocity of the piece we're looking for and when you get your final answer it's going to be point or 22.8 meters per second but that plus meant right because negative meant left the way we started this problem right here and the way we're going to do all these problems in this section right will say positive left will say negative second problem you have a pitcher he's throwing the ball they both are together at the beginning. As you can see, he's holding the ball at the beginning. Their mass is together. They're not moving at the beginning. So they're not moving at the beginning. The pitcher has a, a mass of 95. The ball has a mass of 0.15. And then he's going to throw the ball. And we want to know what his velocity is. And we're going to pretend like he's on a frictionless surface. All these problems will do that. Um, and the ball is going to travel at 40 meters per second. The ball has a mass of 0.15. So when we do the calculations, we get the next step. Zero times anything is zero. We get the 95 V1Fs. But now we have plus 0.6. We need to subtract that 0.6 from both sides. Subtract 0.65 from both sides before we can break out the 95 VI, VIFs. And then we can go ahead and we can divide both sides by the 95. We get ne negative 6 divided by 95, which ends up being a negative answer, which is going to be left. So 0 0.063 meters per second left is your final answer for this problem. Next problem. How fast is 85 kilogram receiver traveling? 
um, traveling 6 meters per second to the right, going after catching a 0.43 kilogram football, traveling at 30 meters per second, right? And of course, they're very safe. They're, they're playing on ice. We're going to pretend like this is a frictionless surface. So we have the 85 kilogram receiver going 6 meters per second, the 0.43 kilogram football going 30 meters per second and they're stuck together because he successfully catches it afterwards what is his final velocity of the combined entity that is a combination of those two so we just do the math the first side the left side turns into 5.2.9 when you when you put these together um, and then the right side is going to be 85.43 now we can go ahead and divide out the 85.43 and we get a final answer of plus 6.12 the plus you have to take into account the direction so the plus was going to be right because it was positive so 612 meters per second right okay this question we have a pool ball traveling at 2.5 meters per second to the right and so we have that pool ball is 1.1 kilograms the other pool ball is also 0.1 kilograms it's not moving and then and the first pool ball hits the second pool ball, and if you're good at pool, and if you use it, if you play pool, you can see you hit one ball with with another ball. They're same masses. The first ball stops completely, and the other one moves on. Well, that's what this question's really getting at. We're going to solve for it, and we'll see that it's getting at it. So we go ahead and multiply those two numbers, add it to nothing, which is just this number, 0.25, and this is nothing because anything times zero is nothing. So we get 0.1 v the v2f. So the second p velocity. Uh, final and we can go ahead and divide out the 0.1 from both sides and we get 0.25 divided by 0.1 and our answer is that our first or our first ball completely transferred its momentum to the second ball and since those masses were the same the the second ball was traveling at 2.5 meters per second right it took its entire momentum from the first ball in a perfect elastic collision right there okay this question we have a 0.5 0.05 kilogram dart and it's traveling at 16 meters per second notice how they stick together afterwards and that's why this version of the equation two masses stuck together going a single velocity when they were both going separate velocities it just happens to be that one was not moving so we have two separate momentums at the beginning we add those together well, really this is just ends up being zero we end up getting the 0 0.05 times 16 is 0 0.8 and when we put these together, we get 0.2 VF, and we can go ahead and divide the 0.2 VFs from both sides, and we get VF of plus 4 meters per second. And that plus has to become a direction as well. Um, so the plus becomes right, and we have a final answer of 4 meters per second to the right. So now it's time for the problem set. If you haven't done the problem set, make sure you do the entire problem set, or at least come and just check your answers. If you're having trouble, you should go back to the problems we did earlier together um, and work on those before you do the problem set. You need to be ready to do the problems without the help of the video when you do the problems. And then just come and check your answers and see a little bit more. Um, there's quick check answers at the bottom of the web page where, where you can see those answers. And then if you're not getting the right answer, you can go check your work with my work here. Okay, so the first one, we have a 2,800 kilogram truck traveling at 12 meters per second, hitting this 1,100 kilogram car at rest, and then they stick together. So since they stick together, we have this version of the equation. And so that, when we put it together, we get an answer of 8.62 meters per second to the right. This question, we have Joe has a mass, uh, is at rest holding a snowball. Joe's going to throw the snowball. So they're together as one with the masses combined. He throws a snowball, and all of a sudden they're separate. So we've got them both combined with no momentum because there's no velocity. And then they're going to have a separate velocity afterwards. Joe's going to take on the, moment, the reverse momentum of the snowball over here. When we do the math, we end up getting... A negative answer, which is 0.138 meters per second left. So Joe would be traveling 0.138 meters per second left on a frictionless surface. Okay, in this problem, we have a 0.45 kilogram ball moving at 5.1 meters per second to the right. And it hits another ball that's going to be at rest. So we have two, um, two separate entities at the beginning. The 0.5 kilogram ball is moving afterwards, has its own velocity. Um, and it even says it's an elastic collision. And then it's asking you what the second velocity is. So we have two individual pieces before with each with momentum, and we have two pieces afterwards. So putting in the values, we have 0.45 for the mass, 5.1 in the question um, for the velocity, and then the second one stops. So the momentum is going to be gone from that piece. Um, and then we have the 0.45 traveling at 20 or 2.0 meters per second and we're trying to solve for how 
fast is this 0.5 kilogram piece traveling afterwards. So doing the math, we get 2.295 for this whole section right here. Um, and then we have point that ends up being 0.9. And plus 0.5. We can't add the 0.9 to the 0.5 because this is 0.5 V2Fs. I don't know what a V2F is yet, so we have to take the numbers and we have to subtract that 9 from both sides. And when we do that, we get 1.395. Now we have to divide the 0.5 from it. When we do that, we get positive 2.79 meters per second, which is going to give you an answer of 2.79 meters per second, right, since it's positive. In this question, we have a 7.5 kilogram shopping cart rolling at one meters per second to the left. And then you throw a three kilogram bag of flour into it. And then it's going to continue together afterwards. So we have one entity with the masses combined afterwards. So just plug it in the values, 0.75 times that. Um, it's rolling to the left. So this is going to be a negative value because of left. Um, plus the, the momentum of the, the bag and when we take the momentum of the bag and we add it to the momentum of the shopping cart, we get a total momentum of 7.5 kilograms times meters per second squared to start off with. Uh, when we find the combined entity, it's going to equal to um, 10.5. Um, that's going to be the combined mass and times VF. It's a single velocity because they're going to be traveling together. And then we can go ahead and do the math and we get an answer of 7.714 meters per second to the right since it's positive. This question, we have a boy skating down the street on the skateboard. Um, so he's on the skateboard. They're combined right now. So this 50 kilogram boy, this 1.2 kilogram skateboard. So you can think of the entity as 51.2, which is what happens when you do this part right here. And you're going 6.1 meters per second and he jumps off. And so the combined entity of the boy and the skateboard going at 6.1, that's the momentum combined. Um, and they're gonna, he's gonna jump off and when he jumps off, his 50 kilogram mass is going to go um, 5.8 meters per second to the right. So it's still going to go to the right. So we have this momentum right here. We solve for the first part. This right here equals 312.32. This right here equals 290. So we're taking away 290 of that momentum that's going to be in the boy, and the rest of it's going to be in the skateboard right here. So we take that 22. When you subtract the 290 from the 312, we get 22.32, and we can divide out the 1.2 from there, and we get an answer of positive 93.6 meters per second. And so that's going to be a right um, answer because of the direction sign. We had a positive, positive uh, direction, which in this case we used positives for right.